Yeah, uh, th that, was, that was the glory days. Uh, 96 in the Olympics, we had the men Nigerian uh, football team won the gold. Choma Jonwa smashed the record of 7.17 in the Olympics, also picking up the first gold medal for Africa in the long jump. That was the golden days where you don the colors of your country, the national team colors, and all you need to do is just go out there, all sweating, blood dripping, go out there and win for your country. You're so proud wearing that national team colors. Gone are the days when you're called by merit to do your country proud. Gone are the days where you work so, so hard and say, look, I'm a Nigerian. We're best in Africa. I, I just wish those days would come back. When I was watching that video, I had goosebumps all over me. And it, it, it brought back good memories, you know, seeing Amonike doing his thing, kind of one call the likes. And so, so, so the late Sunday, but I rest in peace. He did Nigeria so, so proud. These people should be, I mean, they should, they are icons, legend, whether I like it or not. They put us on the world map. Anyway, that's all. Welcome you to Spot Update on Morning Dew. My name is Joel Wakego. We're going to start off exclusive. There's an exclusive news coming out of Abuja. Pinnick Melvin Amaju bows out. Wow. Um, now, the story is, where will, will the cap fit? The political chess game begins. He made the announcement last week, Friday. I remember just last week, he was in Abuja, him and the sport minister, they went to see the president, gave him the number one jersey, and I asked the question. I don't want to talk about that question. I asked if, he <laughs> if he's going to be the goalkeeper for the national team. Anyway, um, now he said he's, not, he's no longer con going for the third term. He's going to bow out like other countries did. The Algeria FA president, president bowed out when they couldn't qualify for the World Cup. Now it's one of Nigeria. Penix said, look, I've done my eight years. I've given my best, and I'm bowing out. Somebody else should come in. But he's gonna he still he used to be there till September when the Congress hold. Anyway, that, that means there won't be the protest coming up next week because there's gonna be a planned protest this week, you know, trying to uh, edge out uh, asking Pinnacle Maju to bow out. But I don't know where you get the advice from. I said I, I don't want to continue. I don't want to be the president of NFF anymore. Somebody else should come in there and do his thing. I've done eight years. I've given the best I have. I've done my eight years. I'm no longer working as the NFF president. There's going to be an election in September for the new president, which is good for Pinnick. Now, uh, Minister of Sports, in the person of Sunday Diary, declares first national para games and it, ret it retreats for support for para sports in Moshuda Biola Stadium. That's uh, the Paralympics and para sports in Nigeria for the disabled. People, this will tell you what they can do a lot. They, they do a lot of events, weightlifting. Now, this is one sport Nigeria has really excelled in the Paralympics. And I think it's time where this is the first edition of the Para Games coming out, out there in Abuja. And I'm very, very sure other federations are there to, you know, are, and pick out talents that will do Nigeria proud in major events across the world. Also, Sunday Direct is saying, look, this is one event we need sponsors to come in so they can put in their best, put in their money. Because this is this sport gives us a lot of medal in the Olympics, also in their championship in Africa. They, they when you see these guys do their thing, you only, you ask a question: How did they do these things? You know, somebody on the wheelchair playing basketball, blind football, with other activities. We we just have to give them all the support they need so they can do Nigeria proud. Now away from that, Francisca Odega will join the Falcons right there in Canada. They had the game last week. They lost out in that game two 0 but Francisca Odega wasn't there. Probably was, if she had been there, she would have, she would have saved the Falcons. But right now, it's a double header. The second leg is coming up by this week, and she has joined the Falcons to take on the Canadian team. Yes, we lost the game last week, 2-0, but it was okay. They had, they had a good game. I saw Plumtree, she did, a, did a thing. Uh, actually, Plumtree did a thing, the defense. Also, Onome B, Azato Shola was on the bench, but she came in later for that game. But the Canadian female team, they're one of the best female teams in the world. They won the Olympic gold in Japan, the last Olympics. And um, the Falcons couldn't hold down the onslaught of the attackers. And they run round rings, I mean, they run rings round our defense, and they got that two goals, decisive victory for them. It's a double header. We're having a different game coming up this week. We just hope and wish the ladies well because they're preparing for the Cup of Nations coming up in June in Morocco. So, Francisco Odega, you have to go out there and do your thing. Now, away from football, let's talk some basketball. MBBF board holds first meeting in Lagos. Yes, um, Musa Kira is holding his first meeting with his board. They are saying, look, we have, I mean, we're on the ground up and running. We have to discuss about international and local events because we don't have basketball league running. And this is where Musa Kida and his board are saying, we have to do everything we can so we can have a running league. So all the federations that has to do with basketball, commissions, and here and there, clubs, 
They had a meeting stakeholders, and they're trying to decide on when to kickstart the basketball league. Because th this is this sport also gives us, I mean, a um, good name when it comes to sport out there. Basketball has always been one of the major sports that government is really putting eye on. I say, look, we have to really develop our basketball, male and female uh, version of basketball. Anyway, that's for Musa Kida. And away from that, let's talk about Osime. Victor Osime officially received Players of the Month in the Italian Serie A. You know, this Osime has been doing the team for Napoli out there in the Serie A. He has been a good striker all the while, getting the brace. He scored a brace, like uh, two goals in three games. Two, two goals. Wow, that's so, so beautiful. But I wonder what happened in the um, qualifiers against Ghana. He couldn't find the net. But anyway, that's, that's Osime. He, I mean, so, so good to, to know he won the best player of the month in Italian Serie A. And guess what? A lot of big clubs are calling for Osime, but Napoli is saying you have to bring out the billions, euros, million pounds and all that to get his signature. And Osime will be leaving Napoli if the deal is right, probably to, the, um, to, I mean, to, to Spain or to England. But I don't see him doing his thing for um, I mean, clubs in the EPL because he's a quality striker. He can run, get in the goals. I just wish him well as he won the best player for the Italian Serie A. Also, away from that, Nigerian government need to show interest in school inter-house sport. Now, we always talk about, you know, the government shying away from grassroots sport. This is one sport I believe we're supposed to lay a lot of emphasis and fish out these kids from primary school down to secondary school level, even nursery school. I saw a situation where and they had nursery school international, I mean, uh, entire sports, and you see kids at the age of three running 50 meters dash, 40 meters, doing the long jump, which is very, very good because this is when I think we have to look at grassroots sport. What happens to be the nucleus of sport development in Nigeria, and that is where you pick talents, whether you like it or not, from that particular stage, give them scholarships so they can be better athletes tomorrow. Because, it, I mean, a, a lot of the quality athletes we've seen, people like Usain Bolt, um, Ben Johnson, the likes, they started, they started from the grassroots, and they, and they got the scholarship they needed, they got the support from the government, even from individuals. And it made them who they are. These are champions, legends. So I think it's time for government to lay emphasis on secondary school into our sports. You have to bring this talent from that age so they can do that thing, represent the country, represent the community, and be a better people. Also, it's a means where the government can also curb youth restiveness because we've seen a situation where a lot of secondary school students they indulge in different activities called here and there. So when these programs when they have programs like this, you know, run concurrently, we can pick out these quality students and give them scholarship, train them properly so they can do the country proud. Now, away from that, federal government approves the establishment of sports university. Wow, this is, this is coming out so, so good for Nigeria. And we have the first sports university right there in Delta State. The founder happens to be Prince Ned Woku. The Delta man. He was formerly. Uh, he was in the House of Representatives a couple of years back, but he he has been to all part of the world. And you find out, look, we need to have a sports university in Nigeria, and exactly what he did out there in Delta State, because whether I like it or not, sports is one of the major things we have to really concentrate on, so we can put our name back on the map. It's not just being the giant of Africa, politically, economic. Uh, I mean, economically, we have to represent. I mean, we have, we have a lot of people that can do better in sport and represent Nigeria really good. I remember some time ago, one of our presidents went to Germany, and um, after paying costly call to the president, as it, was, it was leaving, and he came, uh, before he left, the president said, look, I have to give you something like a souvenir. And he gave him the jersey of Jojo Kocha, and she said, the German prime minister said, yeah, she said, a lot of Nigerians are using what they have I mean, to project the, the country very well. So our culture did that, and Obasanjo was so, so proud. I mean, we have to replicate this. Now, this is one of the means we have to do this, by building sports university, so a lot of people can, you know, go in there, you know, I mean, your talent, you, you have to take it to the next level with good arrangement, good classes, lecturers, because I'm very, very sure we're going to have a lot of foreign lecturers so they can, you know, um, give our students exactly what they need to be the best in the world. Now, away from that, this is big. This is, big. This is really, really big. Um, Ex-World Cup winning player, who is now a coach in the person of Laurent Blanc, is leading the race to be the coach of the Super Eagles. To me, he's one of the best coaches we have in the world. He was there for uh, PSG as a coach. He was there for Bordeaux. 
after winning Laurel's personal best. He has won a lot of things for himself, a lot of Laurel's winning trophies here and there. Managed a team also in Qatar. He was one time the coach of the French national team. He did very, very well also. But right now, he's leading the race to be the coach for the Super Eagle because right now we don't have a coach as we speak. Eguavon has been laid off. He's back to his duties as the technical uh, director. But now we're looking at Laurent Blanc. Probably is going to bring in the French tactics to Super Eagles, which is uh, which is not, not I mean, it's, it's not bad. But I just hope he gets the job compared to other coaches on the list because we have a Portuguese and a German. So he's a French, a Portuguese, and a German. So, but let's just see who gets the nod. But whatever, whichever, which I mean, whoever coaches gets the nod. What what is important is you have to come to Nigeria, you know, with all your tactics and your technique, and make sure. We go to the AFCON, qualify the, for the AFCON, and probably the next World Cup. Also, you need to build a very good team because we have lots of players all over the world doing their thing in, in APL, the La Liga, the French Ligue 1, also right there in the Spanish League. Anyway, away from that, the EPL. Last week, Saturday, there were games that came out from the EPL. It was so, so beautiful. Chelsea. Just winning 6 0. Um, Arsenal lost the game. Also, Man City had it tough with Liverpool, but it ended in a stalemate 2 2. But Man City is still on the top of the log with just one point ahead of Liverpool. Also, Arsenal, what is happening to Arsenal? They chase for the top four. But hey, I mean, these guys can pull up surprises anytime, any day. They're so youthful with the likes of Saka and all that. Um, if my producer would let me have the. Um, table right there. Now, that's the scores for last Saturday games. Also, that's the table right there. Man City is still leading the pack with 74 points. Liverpool is right there, 73. Hot chase. Chelsea, 62 points. And Tottenham Hot Sports with 57. That's the top four. Also, you have Arsenal right behind with 54 points. That means it's just three gap away from Arsenal and Tottenham. And you have West Ham also giving Arsenal a run for their money, 51 points. And the Manchester United, the almighty Manchester, right there on 51 point tie with Man uh, West Ham. What is happening? Wolves. And look at the drop zone. You have Everton just a little bit away from the drop zone. Everton right there on 17 points with 28. Sorry, um, 17 on the log with uh, 28 points. And you have Burnley, Watford, and Norwich on the drop zone. Will they be going for relegation? And you have just seven games to go in the EPL. Now, also, we had games, <coughs> we had games in the MPFL. The Nigeria League is hotting up week 23. Um, we had games that came up uh, from different zones. And one of the games that caught my attention was uh, Rangers. They lost that game to Aimba 2-1. Also, shooting star, they had the game. I mean, they usually play their games at night. And they won that game against Abia Warriors. Now, Niger Tornadoes won that game against Wiki Torres. It was 0-0 goalless draw, according to my, my the Duke against Cano Pillars and MFM. The Almighty MFM, we were talking about MFM, they had issues, but right now, I think the players, they're, they, they, they're waking up to their dreams, and right now they're doing their thing. It's 2-0 against Dakada. Now, there's a game coming up today, Monday football. Gombe United is taking on Nassau United. Quara United is going to host play two United. Ile Chuku is going to Quara. What will happen in that game? Only time will tell. Aqua United will be at home to shooting stars. Also, Heartland is having a field day on Tuesday with Remo Stars. Remo Stars started the league very good. They were taking everybody to the cleaners, but at some point, they ran down to fifth position, which is not bad. Katina United will be at home on Wednesday to Rivers United. Rivers United is stopping the log, followed by a play to United. What will happen in the league? Week 22. Now, this we're going to go into week 23, and... We just have less than 11 games to go in the league. Then we'll find out which team is going to represent Nigeria at the continental level. We only wish all the top four teams well. And also, the window is closed for the Nigerian league. But hey, you have to make sure the players don't get injured, your key players don't get injured, so you can end in a better spot on that log. So you can represent Nigeria in the continental. Remember, there's a lot of money when you qualify for the continental level from, I mean, uh, representing Africa also, your team. But hey, that, that's football for, I mean, the NPFL. A lot of things happening in sport right yeah, now. A lot of things happening. Three things uh, with everything you recapped. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm going to say fantastic Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that tells you a Chelsea fan, right? Sky's always blue for us. Yep. So, uh, moving on with that. Then also the... Uh, another thing I found um, worthy listening to, you know, listening very well to, uh, about uh, Blanc's bid to get the coaching job. Yeah. I find it, you know, after all these years, mm. is it that no Nigerian?
Nigerian is so qualified mm. in that position. I mean, we've had people who've played internationally, not just yep. internationally, yep. but people who, I mean, they've got their game on yeah. despite it all. Yeah. Is it just that a foreign touch is always better or, uh, you know, uh, we don't believe in our own? Mm. I, 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 well, um, I, I don't want to say we don't believe in our own because we, we've, we've seen where, I mean, Stephen Kishi did it for Nigeria. He won the, he won the Cup of yeah, Nations in 2013. Also, he took Nigeria to the World Cup. Remember, he was the same coach of the Togo national team. He took the qualified them for the World Cup. So it's a case of where we have to really make sure our coaches, our local coaches, get the best when it comes to training, understand the other quality coaches. Because when you go to the NIS, we have coaches that graduate every year. Yeah. And these coaches, they are supposed to go to Europe and understand the quality coaches, then bring back where you, you know, learn the knowledge, then replicate and, you know, give our players the same thing you got. But right now, we're always talking about bringing in foreign coaches. And these guys, they come, they get a lot of money, yeah. you know, they get the best of houses, facilities and everything. So if we spend this amount of money training our coaches abroad, they can come back and be a national team coach. You know, a lot of people were condemning Pickney. Now he has dropped in the towel. Yeah. We should have a full take up, just like Eto did in Cameroon. Yeah. So that we can have a focus. But now, but they understand the football. Okay. They understand the terrain. Yeah. At this higher time, they took their responsibility and make a football. Look now, but I tell you what, being a good player doesn't make you a good coach. Yeah. Not right? a coach. No. Yeah. Um, yes. Technics being the cares. president. Yes. Fine. Now, Pinnick has done eight years, and the lost state is eight years. Yes. You he know, has thrown in the towel. Yeah, he has thrown in the and towel. So, is there. Yeah. Everybody knows that if Mokachi takes such position, he could do well. On the part of administra administration. Administration. Yes. So you're in support that Mokachi should be One the president. One player should take charge. Mm. And lead the way for football. All right, let me, put, let, me, let me put you on the spot here. Which player do you think can be the president of the FA? Amukachi can be. Really? Yes. He, had administra he has ad administrative yes. Um, yes. You know, um, yes. know how. I think he can. Okay. Anyway, um, if, if Amukachi wants the job, he has to apply I mean, for yeah. the job. Because right now, he is the special advisor on sport, I mean, to the president. So maybe mm. he's just sitting by the fence and see what. Watching uh, your phone yeah. Now. Then another story. Uh, what they talking about is, is uh, the sports university mm -hmm. in Delta. Uh, the visual there showed um, an administrative building. Mm. And uh, for a sports university, you know, I just kept on staring at that picture. I was like, is this meant to be the administrative block? Or Could be. The, uh, <laughs> okay, you expect uh, to see like football pitches, long yeah, tennis, swimming. When you talk about the sports university, yeah. I mean, it's broad. It's, yeah. It should be even broader than okay. a regular okay. university. You should have um, the medical units where people are mm -hmm. going to learn physiotherapy yeah. and other things yeah. that go with sports, mm -hmm. uh, healthcare. There should be sports administration. Yeah. Uh, there should be the sports itself. People, yeah. you know, learning yeah. and that there should be coaching mm -hmm. and technical advising units. I mean, sports. It's there should be sports marketing. Mm -hmm. You know, departments. Everything that has to do with sports, yeah. uh, sports management, all that. So I wonder if it's that one block that is going to house everybody. I, I never saw, there was no visual for a standard okay. Olympic size pool. Okay. There are no football pitch, no track and field place. Uh, there's nothing for basketball. Yeah. I mean, these are just things. There's no shooting mm. range. Okay. I, I, I mean, so. Well, um, what you saw there is just, I, I think, like you said, is that the treasure block. And that was just the only picture we could get at the moment. But I'm very sure all the facilities are right there in that university. I'm going to do a lot, probably tomorrow, I'm going to get other, so you can, we can see exactly what is happening right there in that, you know, sports university. Because I'm, I'm very sure Ned Walker is not just any kind of person. He knows exactly what he's doing. He has pumped in a lot of money. He, he, is that his own pet project? Is it personal to him or is it a government thing? Oh, well, it's, um, it could be, you know, I mean, in conjunction with the government, you know, I can tell. I mean, so, but what is important what, is what, we are what, having a sport university in Nigeria. What great students are they coming in with school set as usual? Would they pass to the CHAM thing like we do in regular university? Because this time it's a university. Or just straight from the primary schools to the university. Well, um, for now, we, we can't really say exactly the, the, the means of admission because, um, but I think for the fact is the university, they have to follow all protocols and all the processes of getting into university. But to me, I think it's one of the best things that happened to Nigeria. We can have, you know, a sport university. You come out of the, I mean, as a graduate in athletics and table tennis and that different field. Mm, it's, uh, it's good because, like I said, it's very broad.
broad. Yeah. Uh, you have so many mm -hmm. departments. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not just uh, regular sports. Yeah. You know, even sports laws. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, they have everything, mm -hmm. and uh, you're having like uh, uh, anybody who finishes from there will have dual careers. Definitely. As a sports person. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, the other thing, yeah. and also. Uh, I believe they would also give um, more attention to people coming in from sports academies. Yep. But uh, because these are the ones that are already being nurtured from yeah, very yeah. tender yep. ages. So yes, but I mean it's a free and fair. Definitely, show. it so is. It's Definitely. not just about uh, being a sports mm. person, but uh, having the interest in sports. And there was um, this other thing about. Um, uh, yeah, I wanted to talk more about his pinning. Okay. And his, uh, I mean, he was uh, breathing fire last mm -hmm. week. Yeah. He yep. <laughs> I mean, he has the president backing yeah, and the sport and ministry. He was someone, he was someone to the, house, to the house asking him what really happened, how come Nigerians didn't qualify, you know, so probably had a lot of explanation to do and they thought, okay, you have to throw in the towel and, and they did that. So we <laughs> yeah, because the way it is, the Super Eagle doesn't have a coach, under 23, no coach, just only the female team have a coach. So, because, and there's a chance tournament coming up where you have the home base um, Eagles representing the country in it, the, it's called a chance tournament, you know. But I and they don't have a coach. He didn't throw in the towel. Okay. He was stopped from going for a third time, which was impossible anyway. Mm. The bottom line was second time. Yeah. Now, for him asking to be allowed into the third time was an issue mm. that people were also contemplating. Okay. Because there were, were planned protests for yeah. that. Now that he has said, okay, I'm not going. He has completed his tenure. Yeah, so because he has, he has to be, to he, he's going to be there till September when, when the, the Congress election holds. comes. Yeah, so, yes. but right now the way it is, he is still the president, but he's saying, I'm not running for a third time. So, no, he has till September to do his yeah. thing. Yeah. Because yeah. we couldn't see anything good in his first and second term. You want nothing? You know, the job yeah, is all about okay. criticizing. Yeah, because when you have such a position, you allow critics to come. And, but criticizing one constructively only makes you buckle up and work harder. But when they criticize you and you are not taking, you are not reading meaning into the criticism, mm. you can't do anything. That's true. And that's the problem we have in this country. Mm. Someone will tell you what is wrong. You call it negative criticism. Mm. And inside of you, you know you are not going for the what you have been given to do. He knows he didn't do well. We failed on all forms that they wanted us to go through. Mm. Failing everywhere. Mm. Right now, like you were saying, we don't have coach in any of the categories that are mm. important to us. So of what value was he? Was it just the money or the touring around countries around the world? Mm. Oh, well, probably um, the authorities might demand for a report of your eight years, oh, which yeah. uh, is going to make to the public. The Paralympic. Uh, yes, I yes. Think that is so yeah, that is awesome. Wonderful mm -hmm. and awesome. Yep. Uh, I mean, First of its kind. Yeah, it's anything that, you know, is all inclusive all yep. actually um, excites me and inspires me. And I think uh, people should, you know, come yep, out and support that, them yep. massively, mm -hmm. not just um, sponsors, but, you know, everybody go in there, cheer yeah. for them. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, in this part of the world, when someone, you know, has um, a disability, or disability yeah. uh, you're expected to go ball in hand and mm. you know yep. probably do some street begging or live off people yeah. or have anything <laughs> okay. uh, tangible to do but uh, these are people who are coming out you know you're seeing them do things that even most yeah, special people the, uh, normal people in quotes can't kind of do. Yeah, I, you're I don't right. want to mm -hmm. say they're normal yep. but I yep. mean people who've got full their full limbs doing yeah. you see them weight lifting yeah. mm -hmm. you know racing and it's so Wonderful. And, and guess what? That is one sport in the Paralympics that we get a lot of medals. The weightlifting. Yeah, the weightlifting event. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we have to lay up emphasis on this, and government should keep supporting these people. So you know, time to time, we can keep producing quality Paralympians and all that. Yeah. Anyway, that's the size of sport for me. <laughs> I think it's been beautiful all the while. Yeah, it's been beautiful talking so much about sports and so much emphasis. Sports is key and vital to every nation's. Um, uh, uh, upholding a pillar, so mm. yeah, we love sports like that. All right, so time to wrap up. And from me, Tilio Ikoro, it's been a nice day having you here. Don't forget, same time tomorrow, we'll be right here with you. For me, Joe Walker, you'll stay to those sport matters later today. Bye now.
All right, and before I sign out, don't forget to download our app from the Google Play Store. Uh, that's at Super Screen, or you can also download the Avo app. Just click on Super Screen, that's channel 110, and you are on the go with us. And we're also on social media, on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. On YouTube, we're Super Screen. On Instagram and Facebook, we're Super Screen NG. And on uh, Twitter, we're on Super Screen TV NG. And uh, we have, you can have us on the go, 247. And for me, Jennifer Mosey, have a wonderful Monday and a great weekend.